Angie, I just listened to um, this 19 Keys interview with his father, and I felt inspired after that to, to comment and to post, and I've kind of stayed clear of um, GLBTQ um, kind of, you know, I guess, speaking speaking directly about uh, GLBTQ uh, matters because I'm not a part of that community. And so, you know, for me, I have always kind of looked at, like, for example, when it comes to advocacy of people of color, of, you know, black women specifically, I think anybody can um, offer support and everybody can offer advocacy, but to, you know, to pretend that you really understand what it's like, you know, is um, kind of coming from a place that's not like it's you don't really know what it's like to to be in the skin that I'm in and to uh, experience some of the things that I that I experience uh, on a day to day basis. Um, and so I don't know if you're in the best position to necessarily speak for me. Um, and I say that to say that, you know, I, I try my best to be as open minded as possible. I understand that even like people that are in opposition to my perspective and my views, um, I try my best to even sometimes in my quiet time and in, in introspection when I'm having honest conversation with myself to be able to look at it through their lens as well. You know, the idea of, okay, well, what if you did grow up in a background where you were never exposed to other types of people? What if you never had a black friend? You know, I understand race is a social construct, guys. I, I get that. But there's implications to this conversation of race. So you do have people who make a lot of assumptions about certain certain communities and they don't even have close people they don't even have people that are in their circle or close to them who um, are a part of those communities. And that goes on both ends. Like, you know, people who, for example, people who may have grown in, grown up in poverty make a lot of assumptions about people who grew up in extreme wealth and extreme affluence and may, may not even have any close connections or relationships with people who grew up in that mentality, but have this sometimes disdain or disgust of how could you be such an elitist? How could you lack such a sense of compassion for other people that you share the planet with? And the truth is, just like they don't know what it's like to walk in your shoes, you don't know what it's like to walk in their shoes. So it's ignorance going both ways. However, um, you know, with, with privilege, it's a little bit more, they're, they're, they're able to have a little bit more comfort in their ignorance. Um, whereas with poverty, it, it may be ignorant <clears throat> coupled with um, a, 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 a deprivation of human, of, of basic human needs. So then we prioritize, okay, well, basic human needs have to be met first. And this is the reason why um, it's, it's more important to have advocacy for those who are in lack of like basic human needs. So when I talk about, you know, the GLBT community, I don't know what it's like to be a part of that community, but when it, when we are com comparing um, plights, if if there is a plight where children are not able to have like access to clean water, or like people are you know being thrown in jail on a mass scale, or um, you know people aren't having to access to funds or adequate opportunities to be able to provide for their families. I think that there there is precedence pay, um, more on those type of needs than the ability uh, for a, a same sex couple to to marry each other. That's my opinion. And so when I when I look at certain things, right? Because there's a lot of stuff going on with like the thought police, and there's a lot of stuff going on with like basically trying to homogenize people. And I want to let the GLBTQ community know that nobody has to condone like who you are, like, like no one's approval of who you choose to love should sway you, affect you or bother you in any way, shape or form. Your lifestyle is not in anyone's hands to approve of or to condone. So let's be very, very clear about that. But the way that things are being gone about, the way you're going about things is not, um, it's not effective. And I'm making a gross generalization, guys. But 
this, you know, policing of thought and um, ostracizing people and taking away opportunities from people because they make remarks that are, you know, um, are kind of like resembling homophobia or things that are very offensive to you, going about it in that way is not productive. Why? Because people still hold those opinions, regardless if you take their jobs away, regardless if you take their platforms away, they still feel that way. And all it is is kind of making people more closeted about their feelings rather than um, creating a world of uh, more intelligent people in an atmosphere that, of people who live in more cohesion and more harmony. And so what I think is really a better solution is to be able to have cross dialogues, dialogues with people of different faiths. When we talk about religion, a lot of people within the GLBTQ community are anti-religion, anti-Christianity or Islam or Judaism. Why? Because it's it, it a lot of times holds, um, and I'm not trying to speak for any community, but from what I am assuming, I think that there is a lot of um, restrictions, suppression. Uh, a lot of times people who might have grown up like in the Catholic church um, believed like there was a lot of hypocrisy going on. Uh, the various reasons, and, and, and I think the the bottom line that a lot of people, gay people, don't um, rock with the church or you know the mosque or the Torah or whatever is because there's a general belief <clears throat> that their lifestyle or who they choose to love is not something that is um, received with open arms. And the truth about that is <clears throat> it's not because fundamentally Christianity, Islam, Judaism, the three Ibrahimic faiths, the three monotheistic religions, in their original text, there is not really room for that. And so any um, imam or rabbi or uh, priest or minister that is um, saying that that's not the case is kind of taking the word and switching it and kind of... And that's to say, I, don't, I didn't come up with any of these religions. Hell or heaven is not... I don't have the keys to the kingdom like to let you in or like shut you out. Um, but fundamentally, like originally, <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't condone the lifestyle. And just like in America, there are rules to, that govern this, um, this country, right? We have the law that governs this country. There are laws that govern monotheistic faiths. So if you don't fit in, you get in where you fit in. If there's a situation where you're like, I don't really like, like this. I feel like it's ignorant. I feel like... I, then, then you don't, then you opt out. But I would, I would be like, you know, be, being like kind of ridiculous to go to a basketball game and asking them to like change the rules when the rules have already been, always been played this way. Um, what I think is definitely more effective, effective is if instead of being so easily offended and then shutting down and then labeling people as homophobic or completely dismissing them or wanting to like <clears throat> punish them in some kind of way because of their opinions, I think that these open dialogues is really something that it should be um, a teachable, no, uh, teachable um, in learning moments. Because if the objective is to create a more harm harmonious and cohesive atmosphere, um, name calling people or punishing people really is not the solution. Educating people is a solution, and that goes on both ends. Uh, from somebody coming from a very religious perspective, has to be could could very easily say, "Look, based off of my religion, I look at same sex couples as um, unable to procreate, and one of the pillars of my religion is the um, continuation of life, continuation of the human race. So just that, based off of that, this is why I'm coming from this, right?" Now, your response could be like, that is so ignorant, I'm so offended, da 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 But what does that do when someone is speaking their truth? What does that do? And you have to be also very careful that the bullied don't become the bulliers. Because the gay people that I've been close to, some of them have said that they were made fun of growing up because they were different. And they didn't feel like they fit in and things like that. And how, um, you know, 
you don't want to replicate the same behavior of, of people who made you feel some kind of way. You don't want to be a bully, you know, if you're, and if you become somebody who's in a position of power, you don't want to assume the position of being a bully. And my last point about this is when we talk about human rights, we talk about equality. This isn't a matter of um, one people trumping another people or having like dominion over another people necessarily. This is a matter of everybody getting treated the same. So I was listening to the interview and I thought, and I think he's raised a really good point where it's like with rap music, rappers can talk about killing niggas all day. But the minute that uh, something that even sounds like homophobic or something like that is said, then they get canceled. And so why? Why are, these, these, why are there these double standards? Why is it okay to um, condescend people based off of their financial circumstance? Why is it okay to, um, and I'm not condoning filtering language or, or censorship. I'm asking you the questions because I believe in freedom of speech. I believe freedom of speech trumps everything, everything. Okay, I wanna be very, very clear. I live in America because America has a constitution. I could live anywhere in the world, but America has a constitution. It has amendment rights that we say that we abide by. Freedom of speech is, is one of the main ones. So I could very well live in a country that it is, um, can uh, throw you in jail based off of your opinion, right? There are countries that are very, very much dictatorships. But in America, if we say we have a democracy, that means that people have the freedom to speak. So I'm not necessarily advocating for rap music or anybody to get overly censored or overly policed or overly uh, filtered, right? What I'm saying is, why are there certain communities that are off limits and then certain communities you can make the most disparaging remarks about those communities? That seems like a double standard. And if you're really, if it's really about justice and if it's really, really about human rights and equality, then you should stand for equality for all. And you should not be in a position where you are, you know, antagonizing somebody or like violating somebody's human rights um, just because you didn't like what they had to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's bringing like a gun to a fist fight. You know, that's like you're now fighting with your actions. Somebody's words. Whereas you could very well say, look, I think that your opinion is really ignorant. And I don't agree with anything that you have to say, but you are entitled to have an ignorant opinion under our flag, under our democracy, under our constitutional rights. You are entitled to be ignorant. That is your, that is your right. I'm not going to bend over backwards to try and dig up dirt on you or like try and like prevent you from being able to put food on the table for your kid or like violate your human rights or just do things that are just so violating to you as a human being but meanwhile, I'm trying to fight for my equality. It doesn't work that way. It's not gonna work that way. You can't be simultaneously responsible for somebody's oppression, and meanwhile, you're fighting for your, your freedom, your liberation, and your freedoms. So, you know, we have to really be very, very um, aware and cognizant about where we stand, and, um, and, and are, are you simultaneously, you know, responsible for another person's oppression? Um, people are free to, to feel how they want. People are free to speak what they want. You know, it shouldn't really sway anybody either way. All right. Anyways, until next time, y'all. Peace.